Well, good, good afternoon, every. <coughs> well, good, good afternoon, every. <coughs> Hi everyone, I'm Scott and I am thrift shopping again. Here's a wonderful old uh, Dormeyer electric mixer. Missing its base, of course. Very 1940s looking. $5, so, you know, these things weigh a ton. And it would have rested on top of a countertop mixer. And the mixer wasn't there. So, decided to just leave it. I do like how streamlined it is with the chrome and everything. It gives a real Art Deco feel. Now, here comes a heart break. No, not that. That's just one of those lamps. They don't really do very well, and I seldom buy these big old, you know, 1940s lamps. They just don't seem to be very hot with most folks. This is the heartache. Now I knew exactly what it was because I had bought and sold these before. You know what it's missing from right there? Look right there. Okay, right where that felt is. That's what was there, blue glass. Now that's not the exact same lamp, but what's missing is the blue mirrored glass. And there's a chip in the glass cubes, I could have restored that lamp because I've got a piece of blue mirrored glass, but with the chip there in the middle, and these always came in pairs, I simply decided, no, I don't need to take on that kind of a project. But that uh, was a pair of boudoir lamps, would have been from the 1930s. Now that thing that you're looking at, I almost didn't you know, I walked right by it and then went back again, and I was amazed when I turned it upside down and saw a 1930s Noritake label. Look at that. I have never in my life seen that. Boy, that is an unusual glaze for a piece of Noritake. I've seen plenty of uh, Lusterware Noritake and other pieces from Japan and Czechoslovakia and Germany and such, but I've never seen one that looks quite like that. Have you? Anyway, it was only three dollars. Now let's see all the mugs. And oh, I did spy a couple of vintage salt and pepper shakers. Little 1930s guy right there, 30s or 40s. He was only a dollar, but there was only one. I like the hat that he's wearing, and this was cute. Again, probably 1930s or 40s made in Japan, but again, only one. I wish they had, uh, their mates had been there. They're still cute as figurines. Those were a dollar each. That red uh, line on there means one dollar. You'll see in a minute how they do their uh, pricing. I think I show you the sign. Look at that little SOS pad sitting there, or that little scrubber. Did you see that? Who on earth would buy that? Um, I took a look at this. Uh, at first I thought it was Bakelite. It does say made in Italy, I think, on the stainless steel little butter knife there. But no, I tossed it back in and grabbed my luster wear. I should spend more time in the silverware boxes. Oh gosh. Boy, I remember getting sour cream in these in the 1970s. You guys remember that? And there were two little naked people holding hands and it said love. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Now these, mm, 
tricky, tricky. It looks like Hazel Atlas Capri, and it ain't. Pardon the bad, la the improper grammar. Zoom in there. Made in China. All right, so it's looking very 19 Aqua 60s. And I'll tell you, if it didn't have that label on there, it would have fooled me. I, but I knew it wasn't Hazel Atlas. Their color is a little bit darker than that, and it's got little bubbles on it. So I was out running around, I had some errands to do, and this is a little shop on Frankfurt Avenue in Philadelphia, where I like to go. And then I saw this. Now, uh, uh, well, are they trying to be strawberries or carnations or some other kind of berry? I couldn't quite decide. I turned it upside down and it said Limoges, China, and it was $4. I didn't want to pay $4 for it. And I, I guess if those flowers slash berries had been a little more committed to what they actually are. What is that little noise? Oh, that's my little cell phone telling me something. Um, then I would have got it, would have bought it. No, just going to take my little Nortaki. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's take a look at the sign. This is the Circle of Hope Thrift Shop. Uh, with a Mennonite connection, you can see they provide prisoner uh, care kits, refugee care kits, and so forth. Uh, so everything here is local charity. And uh, everything is usually pretty reasonably priced. They take magic, they take crayon of some kind and put the uh, put the prices on. And then I don't know what that license plate thing was supposed to be. It's very long and skinny. Doesn't look like it goes on a car. Does anybody know what that is? NTP872. I've never seen that before. I don't know what it is. Um, so here now I am next door. They're, they have an annex that's like two buildings down. And I find a nice Japan 1930s ashtray. Is it Japan? Yeah, it's Japan. That's that 30s mark. And I would have bought it, but I'm not over the top about the ashtray, about it being an ashtray. The dogs are very collectible from the 1930s. Here is a little... Chris Star camera and that picture was freaking me out I think she's getting a little too friendly with that goose um, made in Japan did anybody have this when they were a kid I guess it looks like it's from the 50s junior photo lab I can remember ooh, $15 uh, I'm old enough to remember my first little camera and how we had to send our film away in the mail yes boy I feel old we were still doing that in the early 80s, sending our film in, in the, away in the mail and then waiting, you know, two weeks for your pictures to come back. And then they started getting them uh, priced in drugstores. But that was a funny little thing. These uh, binoculars... I think they wanted 15 or $20. That pot there with the lid is priced at 40, 45. I guess it's Griswold. I don't know my cast iron very well. $30. Now this, this is the section of the thrift shop where they price things up. Is that what I'm trying to say? They put a hefty price on things which they think is collectible, but after a week, it's half off if nobody buys it. Now, I wasn't interested in those heart um, candlesticks. I was interested in what you see behind it. Look at that. And if they didn't want $30 for it, you can see there it says $30 nut set Noritake. And there's another price tag, which looks like it was in somebody's antique store. 
$30 was too much for me to pay for this as far as reselling it, I thought. But how wonderful to find six little tiny individual nut dishes, and I know my camera is going in and out of focus, but I just want you to admire these. All hand painted. Again, there's that green uh, Noritake mark, which again is sort of a late 20s into the 30s mark. So there's the master nut bowl, and then the three, uh, then the six little ones. Wonderful, in good shape, great for a collector at $30. Resale, I don't know, you know. I mean, I guess I could have attempted it. Oh, the poor old 25th anniversary sets. See, I put that candlestick back where it was. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go back. I hope that nut set is still there and it's half price. Ravioli maker. For $9. Mm, let's see. Uh, oh, look at all these old books. They sure did like a drab green spine, spline, spine, spine. Let's see, boy, $2 for hardcover, $1 for soft. Oh, I want to look through these. Let's just take a look at a few of the titles. And then I think I shut my camera off and really dig in. That handyman set up there was from the 60s. If it had been 10 or 20 years older, I might have purchased it. Let's see. Oh, the life of Franz Schubert. Oh, let's see. Here we have an encyclopedia. Roosevelt in retrospect. Okay. The story of religion. The technique of controversy. Ooh, I don't want that. Biology. 18, what? 18 acres under glass? I guess that's what that, that said. Australia and New Zealand. We're just kind of looking through the shelf, seeing what we can see. Kiss Kiss. Art of dressmaking. Hmm. Wisdom for widows. Oh my goodness. I don't know about that. How many of you like old books, even just to decorate? Now, you know I had to buy my political works, right? You know I had to come home with that. Did I or did I not? Well, stay tuned for a front seat uh, reveal. We're going to do that in just a few minutes. Front seat reveal. Mm-hmm. We'll spend a few more minutes in this. Now, they had to cut and paste Elvis's head on that body. That didn't look right. I'm not an Elvis, you know, necessarily an Elvis fan, but that didn't look right. Did you see that? Did he ever pose for that picture? Hello, lady with fan in chair. So, cast off vacuum cleaners and floor lamps and carpets. Ooh, there's an old, there's a uh, nice antique table. The drop leaf, you see that? We're going to go around and take a closer look at it. I want them to sell me this counter. Very, very late 40s into the early 50s. That, that wonderful cracked ice top with the chrome around it or stainless steel. Boy, I wish I could buy it. Bermuda. Mm. Here's this table. It's a nice table. Let's look at the price. How much is it? $20 if you take it now. $10 if you take it later. Now, if it had been a really nice mahogany, oak, or walnut, I would have bought it. Uh, honestly, I don't really have, I mean, not to use, but to put aside and then resell. It's clearly over a hundred years old, but eh, it was okay. It just wasn't uh, the 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 grain on the wood. I wasn't feeling it. 
And I don't know what that thing is there with that hole in it. Was that for, you put a plant, was that a table and a plant goes down in there? I don't know what that was. A manicure table, do you dip your hands down in that circle? So they have books. Looks like an old washstand somebody painted. But you know, this is just one of those shops. New things come in every day. And I have found some real gems in this place. And you know, other times you just kind of walk out with nothing. You can see a corner of a book in my hand. Oh, did I get the... I well, gave away. Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. That was fun. Just a quick little trip. I was out running around in uh, Philly, and of course, I always have to stop no matter what I'm doing. And it's nice that some little local thrift shops are near uh, the post office, the dry cleaner, the grocery store, the drug store, that kind of thing. And I can always just run in there and see what's what. Let's talk about what I bought. I could not leave behind this Lusterware Noritake piece because I have never seen this glaze before. Uh, it, very unusual. Now let's take a look first at the mark underneath. And we can clearly see that the M inside of the wreath is going to put this uh, in that uh, late 20s to early 30s time frame. I don't have the exact dates memorized, but that's about that's about correct there. And of course, the M is the Mora Mora Brothers. We've talked about them many times. So this piece of Noritake has no chips or cracks on it, and it's just an extremely unusual glaze. Have you ever seen this before on a Noritake piece from this era, late 20s to early 30s? I haven't. Couldn't say no at $3. Now this particular thrift store uses these wax markers, or crayons, whatever they are. Uh, and this easily comes off with hot water. In fact, you can probably just rub it right off. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know, since it's so unusual, I don't know what the collectors are going to think about that, but I was very attracted to it. And then, let me have some iced coffee. Mm. The weather, though, has been so nice. We've had no humidity, and we've been in the 70s for quite some time now. This, okay, well, hold on. Back to the thrift shop. All of those books that you saw, I put the phone down, and I looked through every single book, and I am a book person. And at $2 per hardback, it was tough. I have to make sure that I just don't come home with bag loads full. Because I have nowhere to put a lot of these things. And you don't want to just buy emotionally because then you have regrets. So I bought two books. And I had to go home with Sir Walter Scott's poetry. Am I going to read it? Mm. I probably will. Anyway, this is a 19... Let's look at it. Here's a 19... It's a 1904 publication. So we'll just let you peek at... Where is he? There's Mr. Sir Walter Scott. Hello. Mm-hmm. And uh, nice here. Let's see. Call it not vain, thy do not err. Who say that when the poet dies, mute nature mourns her worshiper? and celebrates his obsesquies, his what? Okay, I'm not gonna bore you with that. So that $2, that's just to put on the shelf. I will admit, I'm probably not gonna be reading it. But the other one is The Art of Dressmaking by, you guessed it, Butterick. And if we're gonna talk about Butterick, we gotta see these guys. <laughs> Don't we all love the Dancing Butterick pattern? <sighs> Somebody is going to really love this book. 
it dates all the way back to 1927 and it's hysterical to look at the absolute no figure on the women in this of course that was the style at that time but look at how elegant the illustrations are 19, 1927 you see right here so won't this be great for a dressmaker now after I bought it and got in the car I looked it up and it sells for about $16 online I paid two dollars I'll probably just keep it since I'll probably only make about a $10 profit on it uh, but you know who knows I may end up selling it what is she wearing a paper sack of course we know the style at that time was Flat as a board, carpenter's dream. Mm-hmm. With the drop waist and everything. Um, the Art of Dressmaking, 1927. I love it. And then outside on the sidewalk, they always have stuff that's for free, and they usually have old LPs that nobody wants, and so I dug through them. And I could not say no because staring at me was the great Swedish tenor UC Bjurling. I know that I don't do Swedish pronunciation very well, but there he is. There's old UC. And um, let's see. The Irish had John McCormick. Believe me, if all goes in a deep. The Italians had Enrico Caruso. <laughs> and the Swedes had Jussi Björling. Our grandparents knew all of those names, our great-grandparents did anyway, bought their 78s. He came to America and did sing in the Metropolitan Opera and recorded some Red Seal records for the Victor Company here in the U.S. A marvelous tenor. And this is at Carnegie Hall, so I'll be playing that on the old Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, on the old Hi-Fi. And um, then we have the great Freddie Martin and his orchestra, a dance party. Freddie Martin had one of those uh, big bands, and a lot of the big bands who were recording in the 30s and 40s, if they could hold on, they continued to make LPs in the 50s and 60s. And we can see here, we're definitely in the late 50s with this dance party, Freddie Martin and his orchestra. I love what it says on the back. It's handwritten here with ink pen, and it says, belongs to Mary Clark and apparently Mary Clark was very proud of this album because here's what she says keep don't give away or loan to anyone <laughs> so who is this message to her husband look see okay well I'm sorry Mary your album was out on the street for free nobody wanted it but we have it and we'll have a little dance party later on perhaps I'll invite you and then we have Dancing in the Dark, Carmen Cavallero and his orchestra. Carmen Cavallero was an elegant, uh, sophisticated piano player. And he had an orchestra in the 40s and, uh, and a very uh, sophisticated sound. And uh, Dancing in the Dark. And we're going to have uh, Dancing in the Dark, The Very Thought of You. That's a good old... Um, a Ray Noble tune, If I Had You, Smoke Gets In Your Eyes, When You Stand Downwind of a, of a Campfire, or Upwind, or whichever way the wind is blowing, uh, Falling in Love, Stairway to the Stars, Cocktails for Two, in Some Secluded Rendezvous, That Overlooks the Avenue, Lover, Alone Together, You're Mine, September Song. Can you believe we're going to be singing September Song in less than four weeks? 
and always in my heart. This is 19... late 50s. Listen to the notes on the back of this. See, you... you Everybody who just downloads their music, you know, MP3s and everything, you're missing out on the wonderful album liners. Listen to this for a minute. The lights are all out, except perhaps for that one dim lamp in the far corner of the room. You're cheek to cheek gliding across the carpet. The silence is broken, only by an occasional whisper and something softly emanating from the phonograph. But seemingly to come from nowhere in particular, tenderly enveloping the entire room around you. Who wrote this? Anyway, you're dancing in the dark. And it's more exciting than anything a staff of choreographer, choreographers could invent in a month of lifetimes. Well, I'm just going to have to go turn down the lights, put this on the hi-fi and see what happens. Who knows? Oh dear. If we don't get any copyright strikes, we'll listen to that together. And then finally, something I paid too much for. Yes, buyer's remorse, maybe. Well, not really. I bought four of these. So I'm going to show you one. Four of these little mini casseroles, or ramkins, or custard cups. I guess they're not custard cups. They're little baking dishes. And they are, of course, Anchor Hawking, Fire King, which you may or may not be able to see in there. I bought all four of them because I don't usually find them with these tab handles. Usually it's just the custard cup. I never find them with lids, with anchor hocking lids. Now these are going to be mid-century, probably the 1950s, and with the anchor hocking, uh, you would get these in uh, jadeite, in the sapphire blue, and peach luster. They would also come in a really white, white milk glass, and they would also come in a much darker uh, sort of French ivory or custard. This is kind of in between. It's not it's not milk glass, but it's not that deep deep French custard color either. So I think this might be the ivory color and um, What did I pay for four of these? Well, they are in excellent condition. I paid four dollars each $3.99 to be exact So Let's see four times four is 16. Is that right? Yeah, four times four is 16, okay. $16 for the four of these. I really don't know what they sell for. They would do a lot better if they were in almost any other color, but because I just never find these two tab handled ones and the little lids, I may just keep them uh, or I may put them up anyway. I'll start the bidding out at 15 bucks and maybe they'll sell for 20 25 dollars for all of them so maybe it's okay well that's it for today everyone thanks for watching now don't forget i bought a print last week or the week before in a local thrift shop and it has a connection to a great old philadelphia publishing company i already walked down to the site and did the filming i've just got to put the editing together so we're going to have a field trip in the next couple of days so get your permission slips signed and make sure your mother packs you a meatloaf sandwich and a few deviled eggs in tin foil or waxed paper. And look forward to that coming your way soon. Okay, that's it. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching, wait for the cat, and so long for now.